I've never seen it. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> here we are. This is Never Seen It. I'm your host, Kyle Ayers. This is the podcast where comedians rewrite famous movies they've never seen before. Today, our guest, having never seen the... Is there a the? In I think so. Or maybe not. Is this a famous movie? I think we're speaking <laughs> the word famous here. <laughs> this, is a, it, it, this is a podcast where comedians rewrite some movies they've never seen before. Uh, it's not infamous. I don't know how to... The, me, this is where this podcast where comedians rewrite memes they've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> Having never seen the House of Gucci, uh, today joining us we have Gianmarco Soresi. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And uh, joining us, I don't know if you have seen it or not. Rebecca, have you seen? I have not. We got this a trio of people who those, didn't see it. One of those <laughs> movies where, like, I and, I and I told you, I saw the trailer mm -hmm. uh, and. I asked a lot of friends that everyone said it was bad, and I was like, bad in a fun way? And they said, no. That seemed to be what everyone hoped. To, you know what I mean? Yeah. When your ceiling is uh, good, bad, it's always a wild movie that like you're waiting to come out. Everyone's like, I hope this movie's so bad I can yell at it at a black box theater in like 12 years. It was one of those movies where, I don't know if you have this feeling, every time there's like too many big names, I'm like, no... Like, like, you know, because in the studio, they're like, well, we got Jared Leto, who's won an Oscar. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, uh, who's the British guy? Um, oh, Someone else. Someone else. <laughs> Al Pacino, uh, Adam Driver, Lady Gaga's the wild card. But you have all these celebrities, and you're like, oh, no, this is going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> it is, is. If you have this many celebrities, and they're not robbing three casinos I at the same time. Yes. Then I don't know if the movie's going to work out. That's like my criteria for. They're like, we have, all right, we have eleven celebrities. I'm like, I know the, how this number works. One of them has to be Julia Roberts playing someone who looks like Julia Roberts. Yeah, and someone I think like Pacino, Jared's got to be like the. You got to. You can only have one weird one. <laughs> and like Lady Gaga is going to be a weird one, no matter what, even good or bad. It's going to be. It's going to be yeah. weird. Yeah. Maybe both. It's going to set the tone of the movie. But then Jared Leto <laughs> is just as wild and weird. And Al Pacino's just Al Pacino. Can you picture them all acting sim in a scene together? That is what is crazy to me, is you say action and those three are sitting there. It's sort of like uh, if you put together an improv team of improvisers who hated each other and said it yep. was an SNL audition. Yes. And you're like you would be watching this chaos of one-upsmanship. I bet they got one take a day. <laughs> with, with, with. <laughs> right, they just everything is just one wide shot because they're just like well, this is all we can really deal with or i love i uh, my, my girlfriend's really good at seeing it of of when she can tell and i think she's she's a manager of when the actors were clearly not there on the same day she notices it right away oh like, but they're in the same scene together same scene <laughs> what a specific <laughs> skill <laughs> Like, I think we were watching just a little bit of Space Jam, and there was Michael B. Jordan and LeBron. Yeah. And it was clear, and you're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. These are very busy dudes. Yeah. There's a good chance Michael B. Jordan didn't leave where he was to end up being in that movie. Sure. He sat in a chair. Someone built a green screen around him <laughs> while he was sitting. <laughs> yeah. And then they just took one shot, and they're like, well, do your mouth and post. The CGI made him stand. The whole thing. It was incredible. <laughs> last night, actually, I watched... When we were talking about Jared I watched Panic Room last night, which is one of my... I love it. It's a great movie. It's tight. You know, it's got Jared Leto in it. This is 20 years ago, I think. And... Yeah. I've never seen that one. It's Who David Fincher. That? And it's uh, 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 Jodie Foster and... Um, oh, why can I not remember her name? The girl from Twilight. Kristen Stewart. Kristen Stewart, but she's like 10. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! And uh, um, Forrest Whitaker, and in this, Jared Leto's perfect because it is Forrest Whitaker. It's like Jodie Foster is good, Forrest Whitaker is like the bad guy who's good, a good person. You know what I mean? Got into it, needs money, and then there's Jared Leto who's an insane person, and then there's like the quiet bad guy who like actually does the stuff Jared Leto would threaten to do. And you get yeah. a good like uh, quadrant of the the main characters where Jared Leto just gets to go crazy, but actually wouldn't follow through on like shooting someone in the face. Jared Leto is interesting. I think a lot of I'm always fascinated by actors who get worse, and it definitely feels like. <laughs> <laughs> 
because <laughs> the only thing that's making them worse is their own minds. It's their own. Right. There's no way Jared Leto doesn't have talent still. Sure. Something in him is is making choices, and he's gone so uninhibited and so out of control, and he's just <laughs> going to suck. Every Same role with- does. <laughs> Johnny Depp. Yeah. Uh, compare that to like a, a, a Meryl Streep or or um, so it's it's just so interesting because unlike an athlete where your body deteriorates, this one is like your taste deteriorates. Your, your own. Do you think it's similar to when like directors stop having people tell them no, and then eventually your movie's four hours long, and, and Eric Bana enters in Act Five? I, it's it's got to be t- yeah, absolutely. I feel the same way about Eminem, who's one of my favorites. Jared Leto um, being Eminem is. <laughs> there's your shirt. Yeah, <laughs> the shirt you'll sell five people who are our age, and they will wear it to to who know you know some to a bar to Skinny Dennis in Williamsburg, and they'll feel great. Yeah, I uh, that is because he's so good in Panic Room. And it's so specific, and he has cornrows, and I still didn't care, and he's just perfect. And then, yeah, he is kind of sl- what Requiem for a Dream. Great. That's Jared Leto. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! I mean, that movie. I've seen. It, I only saw it once, and it's still. I still think about it. It's a one-time movie. Could you imagine yeah. if you're the person who's like, "This is my favorite." <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> you, what movie you seen most? I watch Requiem. For, me and my parents sit down. We watch Requiem for a Dream every holiday season. <laughs> Promise their shirts ass to ass. <laughs> ass to ass. Look, you would get it if you'd seen Rec Room for a Dream as many times as I have. That's a fun. That, that, w- I had a, 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 a talk one time on here about how, like, is it too late to watch 12 Years a Slave for the first? Like, how do you go about who has it? Does it even exist in non screener form? Man, did you see someone at the funniest tweet? The, uh, Paul Dano. Part of the PR spin with Paul Dano playing the Joker in the new Batman movie. Oh, the Riddler. The Riddler. <laughs> yeah, the Riddler. The very different sounding. <laughs> he said, like, he, the character he played was so terrifying he couldn't sleep at night yeah. working. And someone retweeted that and said, Oh, but he slept like a baby during 12 years a slave. Oh, <laughs> he's like, ah, it was so, so right on the money. I Holy just, shit. It was so. The Riddler's just too twisted, though. You don't get it. The riddles <laughs> this guy puts out. Oh my! I am. I'm pretty firmly in the camp of Paul Dano likes to get the shit beat out of him. Yeah, definitely. Sure. That that. I mean, I was a big Daniel. I you know I started as an actor, so but Daniel Day Lewis was my guy. And uh, reading about that bowling scene and mm-hmm. there will be blood. Like Daniel is throwing those pins. Yeah, you will get hurt. I think so. I, I wouldn't be surprised if something came out and they were like, we had to keep redoing takes because Paul Dano was hard or something <laughs> like that. They were like, it just kept ruining the takes. The masochism is just that <laughs> deep. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I, the spin with the Riddler thing is so, even if it's true, it seems so formulated. And also just act. Like, it is crazy to me. I don't know how deep you need to get into I... being a, a Riddler. Sure. I I think being all that method stuff is fine. I just think at this point it's so disingenuous. That's what, yeah. The P, PR people lean on it. Speaking of, Jared Leto. Speaking, speaking of, if you... <laughs> speaking <laughs> of the, the, the press, the press tour, The press tour for House of Gucci even, Lady Gaga went full method. I heard... If you read any of the quotes that she... That... It was wild. She, well, she... We had the same acting teacher, actually. Lady oh, Gaga. my God. Circle in the Square, which is the Lee Strasberg acting school, and it, it's it's a lot about you know your your emotions and exercises that from afar might seem you know, a bunch of bullshit, but I think are 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 true. But you're not supposed to just talk about it. That's the thing. You yes, go, go do animal work, <laughs> character to a, a cougar or whatever she did. Yeah. Like, you, don't, you don't need to say that in front of people. That's what it's makes embarrassing it feels, to say. Yeah, it. that is what makes me feel like it's a, it's more of a show type of thing. Is when like everything Jared Leto did that I would read about felt like show. That's what it did. It felt like the oh, you're mailing like, a rat to somebody for this. Movie. I used condom. Yeah, and like was, Daniel what, Day what? Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis never says anything about it, and he's the one that everyone knows like really does the thing, and like 
you never hear him. He never, he, he's never quoted on Twitter being like, I did this. Imagine like Daniel he, Day-Lewis has Twitter and he's just like cobbling no, but shoes I, this week. Yeah, like the, I think the only thing we've ever heard from him really about it is like in one Oscar speech, I think he apologized to his wife for being like unbearable during the process. But sure. other than that, like you don't That's hear just him had to push him around in that hospital shit. bed while he wrote with his foot. <laughs> Yeah, I right. he stayed in that wheelchair for, well, well you know what I did? I, I was in an acting company after college, and I love Daniel Day-Lewis. So what I did, I, I uh, decided, we had some exercise where you picked an autobiography, and you portrayed that person, and you would try to inhabit it as much as you could. And I did my left foot. And so I, and this was, this was when it was back, when it was okay to do this in 2016, where I pretended I, I had... Of uh, uh, cerebral palsy for this character, and I got a wheelchair off of Craigslist, and I went so far as to my girlfriend. I mean, this is hard. My girlfriend would push me around in public in a wheelchair, and let me tell you, nothing will make you act better than pretending like you have cerebral <laughs> palsy while you're out to dinner, because if you if you fuck up. Now you're a person who's oh, pretending. Wow. You've like if you fuck up, it's it's all over. <laughs> if you fuck up, it's literally all over. Yeah. My girlfriend was <laughs> me, and uh, at some point I was paying for the dinner or whatever. So she got out my wallet to pay because again I had mm -hmm. my left foot. All I could use was my left foot. And I was wearing a shoe, so she got <laughs> my wallet to pay. And this was credit cards went through a phase where they had the little picture of us uh, on the credit card. So I'm. I am exhibiting full facial uh, uh, tics and contortions, and she pulls out the credit card, and it's me like. <laughs> and I was so terrified. Oh, terrified. Oh, that is crazy to remove the net like that. If you slip up, it's very public. How do you choose the restaurant to go to? Because you can never go there again. It's only Wendy's. <laughs> You have to go to a place that you like don't really care about. That's true. Like, you what just if you, come what if you, walking what if you in go? next week for yeah. lunch. What if you go and it was the best meal of your life? You're like, I have to go, but you have to keep up the bid. Otherwise, they'll... <laughs> and who knows? Maybe I was doing a bad job, but who's going right. to die? That's even like, bolder yeah. is to call you Or you out. come back or you come back fully fine. The food was so good. <laughs> it healed All me. Right. Right. <laughs> An even more bold move. Then your performance is being the person that looks at you and thinks, I think he's faking it. Because if they're wrong, no, the restaurant has to close. That's how you get like the D rating in Manhattan. It's not health guidelines. It's like something like this happens, and to prevent it from going viral, you just close and put a health rating. <laughs> I think that with the method... I don't dislike it. I think it's like very results-based. From there, there, Let's say there's a total number and it's 100. Your annoyingness has to be close to what your quality is. The clo they both have to sort of be maybe not, not doesn't even matter if it's out of hundred, but like the, okay, like like Jeremy Strong, right? That was sort of the most recent like this thing. I read that whole article and I stopped and I was like, yeah, but it's so good. Like <laughs> yeah, that wasn't that I didn't find that annoying at all. I, I was like, yeah, a go off. Problem with it, it. worked. It worked. I think it's kind of an obnoxious comment that some people make like, well, Brian Cox doesn't need to do it. And it's like, okay. 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 And? I don't yeah. know what to tell you. Yeah. Maybe I don't think, yeah, I think. Stuff, he sucks. Right, it right. Sucks. It's, it's absolutely, it's, it is, <laughs> if that article, I, I finished reading, I'm like, well, but it is a singular, unique performance that I've never seen anything like. And it really, I stand right. by that. It is no one has been like this ever in something that I've seen and done this good of a job. And so I'm just like, yep. But if it was bad, if all, if it was all, ev everyone on that show is good. So it's like not a very good example of a so show. If you're, but, but if it's like Jared Leto Joker situation where it's like you went that hard, you made so many people like uncomfortable or at least at the very least exhausted. And then that's what it is. It yeah. feels random. Like, right. <laughs> right. like, oh, you're doing this. Because, oh, uh, uh, your character feels constrained, so you're going to tighten your shoelaces. Okay. But Jared Leto's like, well, what if the Joker 
uh, sent dead pigs to people. And it's right, because like, now it's not about him. Now it's about him terrorizing <laughs> other people. It's like, how is that helping you yeah. get to a place by just making other people miserable? Also, it's funny to think that he made his assistant do it. And he's like, right. can you just go mail that pig? And then he sat back and he's like, acted today. Right. I don't yeah. know if, to me, it's crazy, specifically for something like the Joker or whatever, because you're just like, man, if only there was some backstory I could think about with this guy. <laughs> if only historically there's 80,000 hours I could consume of this character and get into it that way. No, no, no. He probably mailed a pig. There's no, you would never do that. <laughs> but I, I, House of Gucci, okay. Yes, yeah, so Lady Gaga, <laughs> Lady Gaga really seems to have taken a, took a psychological hit from it, she said. She said that she was br driven to the brink, almost to the brink of madness. She wrote an 80 page biography of what? the character in order to um, get closer to her. And Isn't then it felt... a real person? <laughs> <I'd> yes. Like, <laughs> I would like to read this biography. I really would. <laughs> I would too. I would too. It's 80, 80 pages long. That that feels really random to me. That is so crazy. Patrizia Gucci. <laughs> Who Lady Gaga doesn't look anything like. Now this is my first right. time. I don't know. So what? I don't know the story of House of Gucci at all. I don't know what happened. And we have your script, so I don't want to like me. Well, this will definitely really eliminate. Happens. Let's do that before we get too far into the, the specifics. Uh, so what were you carrying into this that you thought about? Uh, I mean, I know Gucci handbags. Um, <laughs> do you I think know that if the movie opened with based on. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the handbag, from the makers. Apart from that, they're they're licensing. They're making a game out of. Uh, they're making a movie out of battle. They made a movie out of Battleship. Yeah. The game. They're believe you me. They'll have movies. <laughs> they'll have Gucci. They'll have uh, you know, uh, 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 coffee brand. Right, uh, Folgers. Avocado Folgers. Folgers. It'll be a the Folgers movie. game, and it's like called From the Grounds <laughs> Up or something like that. Oh gosh! Seinfeld's making a pop hearts movie. It's a, yeah, we're, we're, that was actually like a that felt like I had real? to really really research that that wasn't the Onion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is real, and I oh, think wow, like, why? <laughs> why is he doing that? Well, like, oh, I like pop tarts. Let's watch the pop tarts movie. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's uh, really something. But unfortunately, that is about how thought through it's going to be. I think. Absolutely. Capitalism is the death of, of all art. Yeah. 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 We're, we're also Anyways, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we'll be right back and we're going to get into the script. I'm actually really supposed to do that. And I think it's a funny time. Yeah, that's a good time. <laughs> Capitalism is the death of all art. Here's all right. All right. We're back. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody. Once again, that was quip.com slash never seen it. What were you saying? Capitalism is the death of art. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> it's right there. But let's let's do your script. Let's cast this and 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 then. You let us know. Oh, boy. It is going to be an accent thing, isn't it? Oh, I, I, be a, it's going to be a tough one. And I don't have a lot of good accents. I have zero good accents. The good so. thing is neither does anyone with, like, maybe the exception of, well, who's it, like, Jeremy Irons? <laughs> like, I'm thinking <laughs> yeah. of, like, who's in this? Uh, I don't think anyone got great accent scores in this whole movie. Um, True. Come here. We're casting. <laughs> um, here, wait. Let me get her mic. We'll give you a small part. All right, she's gonna be off off screen. All right. Okay, we'll have a Tova on the God mic. Here. <laughs> um. All right. I got the script. Apologies to Italians everywhere in advance. So. Oh, I mean, this podcast has probably been needing to put that press release out pretty regularly <laughs> to every, basically every country on earth um all right i got the script here just so everyone knows my girlfriend's not italian uh very jewish all right so who, who do you want playing who here okay oh am i casting yeah go ahead mm -hmm. and cast it on okay. out. all right i'm gonna be uh gucci marco which is jared leto um uh Rebecca, will you be uh, Lady Gaga in a wig? Okay. Um, uh, Kyle, would you be uh, 
Can you do a British accent, kind of? No, but I will try. Okay, uh, Lorenzo. Okay. You're Lorenzo. Uh, Tony. No, sorry. Okay, I take it back. I'm Gucci Marco. I'm uh, a Tony. Uh, Kyle, you are Lorenzo mm -hmm. and Fabrizio. Uh, Rebecca, you're Lady Gaga in a wig. Uh, Tova, you're Carla. Um, if anyone else comes up, you can also cast it as they show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you want to do our directions here? You, me, I'll do it. Yeah, sure. All right. Okay. House of Gucci. Uh, interior, House of Gucci. Pan across a long Italian table covered in marble trays of spaghetti. <laughs> Fusilli, rigatoni, ravioli, and spaghettios. <laughs> Landing on Gucci Marco Gucciano, Jared Leto. Stirring an espresso with a breadstick. He's sweating profusely and speaks with an accent that, even though Italian is not a race, feels racist and is accompanied by subtitles. <laughs> I'm calling this a meeting to make it the biggest announcement in our familia's history. As he continues, we jump around close-ups to the Gucci family and associates, including Lorenzo Cerezi, Jeremy Irons, wearing a sleek suit, Carla Gucci, Selma Hayek, her hair done up so high it touches the ceiling, and Tony Gucci, Al Pacino, in a wife beater. When my great grandpa Luigi and my great grandma Donkey Kong start making the Gucci bags, they had the division to someday make the house of Gucci the world of Gucci. <laughs> Which is why I'm so excited to announce we are teaming up with Walmart to mass produce affordable Gucci handbags to America. And now I turn it over to Gucci's head of international sales and my sexy, sexy daughter, <laughs> Lady Gaga in a wig, pan to an empty chair. Uh oh. <laughs> I, the the direction that will be lost on the podcast is in an Al Pacino accent. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> she doesn't appear to be here. Grazie, Lorenzo. What would I do without you, Carla? Don't just sit there. Go get her your stepdaughter. My hair is stuck in these. <laughs> 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 That's the the decent Italian oh, accent. <laughs> Again. A decent one. I know she's off screen, but for some reason the mic sounds like out a window down on the sidewalk. <laughs> like she's just standing really far away. Like Billy Eichner ran up to her and told her the line. <laughs> for a dollar. Uh, pan of proof so that her hair is in fact stuck in the chandelier. Giancarlo! Uh, the House of Gucci's butler. Uh, this is going to be you, Kyle. The House of Gucci's butler, Giancarlo played by one of the most gifted Italian actors of his time, the Daniel Day-Lewis of Italy, if you will, winner of countless Italian acting awards and thought to be a once-in-a-generation talent, descends the winding staircase. See? Si. Is Lady Gaga in a wig in her room? Giancarlo shakes his head no. This is the last we'll see. <laughs> Gucci Mark makes an Italian gesture to the heavens. Mamma mia! We zoom in on the slope of Gucci Marco's hand gesture as it turns into <laughs> an exterior ski slope. Lady Gaga in a wig, Lady Gaga, <laughs> races down the slope, speeding past Fabrizio, Adam Driver, who is aroused by her speed. <laughs> a wig smacks him in the face. Cut to exterior, bottom of the ski slope. Lady Gaga in a wig, no longer in a wig, holds a massive 1980 cell phone that's so heavy it takes two hands to carry it. <laughs> Finishes dialing a number with her nose and then struggles to hold it against her ear. She speaks with more of a Russian accent. So, how did he take it? Miss. Excuse me, miss. Lady Gaga in a wig turns to see who it is and her eyes light up sexily. Let me call you back. <laughs> Rebecca, you're kind of killing it. And my mom's Russian, so I'm doing a Russian accent. Fabrizio enters frame holding Lady Gaga in a wig's wig. He speaks with a good Italian accent, but it will be strangely absent from the next scene. But you dropped this on the slope. Grazie. What is your name? Fabrizio. And you are? Lady Gaga. In a wig. 
I'm from the house of Gucci. More like the rubble of Gucci. And you are? Fabrizio. I design handbags for Nordstrom. Lady Gaga vomits briefly. <laughs> I'm sorry about your mom. My father had a saying. La familia è tutto. Family is everything. But your mama is a bitcha. <laughs> but your mom's... Oh, my God. Now I see why she dressed up like a horse and waited for the mafia to chop her head off. You're cute. She coughs out a cigarette, so that is perfectly placed in her mouth. <laughs> and gestures for Fabrizio to light it. He maintains smoldering eye contact as he does. How would you like to come to the most important business meeting in handbag history? A me? <laughs> Lady Gaga in a wig sexily nods as she takes a deep inhale of her cigarette and blows out a disproportionate <laughs> amount of smoke. Oh, then it was right in my face. So the smoke is, is covering the screen. You can barely see him. Oh, and that was right in my face. That, that it was right in my face. But just wipe it off the sheets. The smoke clears to reveal interior Milan hotel room. Lady Gaga in a wig, smoking, lies in bed with Fabrizio, harshly wiping his face as Lorenzo finishes getting dressed across from him. Sorry, Fabrizio. I should have said that's how Gucci's do business. So it just, is... to be clear, just to be clear for everyone at home, it's intimated that Lorenzo just came on Fabrizio's face. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> so it is settled. I kill the Walmart deal so that Gucci remains a premium. This is no accent anymore. A pre- I was thinking about how Jeremy Irons says like that deeper. It's not okay. Like a quiet. He's not voice, like so. Yeah. It's settled. I no. kill the Walmart deal so the Gucci remains a premium brand. And then once it has accrued enough credit. We allow it to be licensed by American rapper to use for his Gucci main stage name. Oh, that's a very convoluted plan. Who, who is this anyway? A bag designer. A foreign Nords. Lady Gaga in a wig smacks him. Don't say it. We've made enough of a mess as, as it is. Knock on the door. I can't stay for post-coital penny, but here. He hands Fabrizio a card. You design for Gucci now. Fabrizio reaches for the card, but Lorenzo withdraws it. So long as you keep this a secret. I don't know why he's Michael Caine is like now who he is, but that's okay. He could be in this. <laughs> Fabrizio considers his deal as we zoom into his pupil. Flashback. Fabrizio telling his wife he's designing <laughs> bags for Nordstrom. She vomits. Flashback. Fabrizio telling his dying mother he's working for Nordstrom. She dies. <laughs> Fabrizio telling his six-year-old son he's working for Nordstrom. His son picks up a large rock and jumps into the river. <laughs> he returned to his face, no longer on the fence. I see. Lorenzo gives him the card and opens the hotel room door, exiting as housekeeping, this Yutova, played by one of Italian cinema's most magnificent actresses in recorded history. The Meryl Streep of Sicily, they call her, who rolls the tray in silently, nods, and exits. I'm nodding off screen. <laughs> <laughs> bon appetit. <clears throat> I didn't know you spoke French. And I know like five words in Italian too. I'm going to freshen up. Feel free to start without me. Lady Gaga in a wig struts into the bathroom. Fabrizio lifts the tray, revealing penny alla vodka. He goes to take a bite when he notices mm. a stray spaghetti. A mew. <laughs> he starts eating from one end, but it seems to be stuck. So he starts chomping closer and closer to the plate until he sees it continues off the plate, onto the floor, under the door even. He continues to chomp, quietly opening the door and exiting into interior hotel hallway. Fabrizio follows the spaghetti with his mouth, right, left, upstairs, downstairs, until he gets to interior elevator, where the spaghetti seems to continue up into the shaft. Fabrizio looks at the button, unsure what floor to go to, until he sees a marinara fingerprint on the rooftop button. He presses it, wiping the sauce off on the spaghetti and chomping it right up to the door. The elevator goes up and up until finally reaching the top. Ding. It opens onto the roof, where the other end of the spaghetti is in Tony's house. Ah! Tony grabs Fabrizio by the face and gives him the Sicilian kiss of death. I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Fabrizio gulps in fear as a Pavarotti cover of Bad Romance starts playing. 
Bravo. Oh. Excellent work, Tova. Feels close. Tova, great job. Thank you. That was incredible. <laughs> um, oh. I am awake now. That is like... <laughs> I don't... The spaghetti... Spaghetti journey is so funny. Picturing him, Jared Leto stirring a breadstick in an espresso is actually like a tone deaf thing. I think he might actually have done. Uh, yeah, uh, it yeah. feels sort of like in his his wheelhouse, I guess, if you will. Absolutely, I could see him. He comes in with that choice. What, what are you going to tell an Oscar winner? Uh, that doesn't feel real. <laughs> He's probably got an Oscar with him. He probably brings it around everywhere oh, he goes. Th for sure, he carries it around everywhere he goes. And tells everyone it's for uh, Panic Room, where he was so good. Okay, I, it's bad timing that I watched the movie last night. It's all I can think about. Um, wow, I don't... Is This movie didn't get nominated for any Oscars, did it? No, people were, people were like... Lady Gaga fans were like upset, like as if, as if she... It wasn't even considered a snub. It was considered a, of course, <laughs> of course. Like not. it's a considered a, we were waiting to be upset if it did. She was nominated for some awards. Like this, this is clearly one of those movies that there's like enough powerful PR people. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll never forget when Jennifer Lawrence uh, won for Silver Linings Playbook. She was like, Harvey, thank you, Harvey, for doing whatever you had to do to make this happen. <laughs> I remember God. all four leads from Silver Linings Playbook were nominated, and the the wife, Robert De Niro's wife, in it like really had a tiny part. Yeah, and they all were nominated, and everyone was like, "Harvey, we <laughs> love you. You're so we love you and the way you treat women. Thank you, Harvey." And it just ate like six months later. Right, and the thing was, they just won those awards last last month. That was what was crazy about their speeches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, the only Academy Award that this movie was nominated for was makeup and hair. You know what? It, I'm surprised they were like, you know, this is what I hate about the Oscars this year. They're cutting out all the awards for uh, funniest accent. You don't get to watch those ones on TV anymore. <laughs> that actually did get upset seeing they're cutting out the awards that are actually interesting to me. Yeah. From the programming. I, I also think I do have a problem with Jared Leto is a very handsome man. Mm-hmm. And these handsome, these handsome actors, they're like, you know what I want to play? Now that, I've, now that I've tackled all the hard roles, I want to play ugly. Right. I want to. How did it not get nominated thing, for an award the, for being brave enough to be ugly for two hours? But the thing that, it, to add insult to injury, is that the man that he's playing is much better looking than what they made Jared Leto look like. He's just like a, the man that he's playing is like a dapper Italian man. Really? He just happens to be like, I guess, balding or something, but he was certainly not, he looked absolutely nothing like what they made Jared Little look like. If you, you're slightly balding and every portrayal of you is like disgusting. And you're oh like, right, oh my gosh, this is incredible. This, he's they, a handsome man. So like he's just like a dapper Italian Paolo man. Paolo Gucci. And if people don't know, uh, basically he's like a ha pretty handsome looking old. Yeah, Jared like Leto in this gentleman. movie looks like if this guy had an hour to try and look like Mario. Like, that's what they did to him. Let me see if it's, I could. They don't, there's not really a lot of younger it, pictures of him. It's absolutely insane what they did to him. Oh my God, that's so... It, it, it's, it's not even... To, to do that much in the way of prosthetics, to make someone look nothing like the person, is... Uh, I guess it's camp. I don't know what it is. It's insane. If only uh, there was a way. It's certainly like, offensive. Like if only there were, <laughs> if only there were still like actors in the world who were older. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. It would be crazy if they could cast these people. And I, I really, it's so funny thinking about like Italian actors looking at this. Like, is this nothing? What What if Paolo Gucci, if he was still alive, and someone's like, Paolo, Jared Leto's playing you in a movie. Oh, Jared Leto. That's right, right, right. <laughs> that's great. That's who I would have picked if I could pick that speech. It's almost it's almost like Stellan Skarsgård and Dune level of like not cool what they did. <laughs> of, these like, look like these look. look like whoever made whoever made Vice still had the Dick Cheney suit sitting around <laughs> that's and it, just gave yeah. it to him the, and they're like, here the we go. Gullet that they gave this man. For right. what? My sketch team had a sketch. I mean, this is not a very nice sketch, but uh, uh, 
it was like a, a woman she comes back to set and she's just had a baby this is not going to read well as describing it but i promise you. she comes back to set she just had a baby and everyone's like oh my god you look fantastic you look wonderful uh they they do the scene they go cut uh let's just we're going to reset up lights let's bring in your stand and and it was my friend and a co-host of my podcast russell daniels comes in as her stand in and he's like uh, he's a heavier guy and she's like what and 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 it's just like the the mix of that yeah where someone portrays you you're like wait you think i look like that right oh my god <laughs> in this scene she couldn't say anything without offending him so she's just like uh and uh <laughs> yeah you can't say it to his you can't say it to the person portraying you's face wait yeah. i don't look that bad <laughs> oh i'm bad that's yeah this is uh <laughs> i'm trying what it yeah it remi that reminds me of like uh i loved i mean i don't i love tropic thunder and that's such a funny way to like portray like a race being cast in a movie that has only almost aged i think in a pretty funny way where there's like this you know if i don't know if people have or haven't seen it or if you're a gen z kid who cancels robert downey jr every six years for this movie uh you know he's like a method white guy wearing blackface taking the only good black role in the movie and then there's like another black guy in the movie it's very funny i don't know uh, any i don't know why they didn't just make this movie with italian i don't care if i've heard of them if it's an interesting enough story i so, also don't think like i think when you have a lot of the actors that are in this movie you don't need Jared Leto because no one's going in the movie for Jared Leto. They're going for Lady Gaga. They're going for Adam Driver even. They're going for Al Pacino. No one is looking at that cast and being like, well, I have to see this movie. Jared Leto's in it. Who fucking cares about it? I like to think there's a pretty big like <clears throat> uh, pre-Snyder cut Joker fans who love House of Gucci. Like this is like they have, this is the two things that they care a lot about. They care a lot seems like about two. DC being portrayed dramatically <laughs> on screen and uh, the Gucci family lineage. Yeah, I guess. So they're trying to pick them up. I don't even know if this, this I don't even know if this movie's in theaters. I, I I'm sure it was. I have a hard time following anything anymore. All I remember is uh, when the first pictures came out for House of Gucci, like the stills from on set, everyone was like, "Oh, we knew." You could just tell from the first pictures. Yeah, but I, I hope that it would just be like exciting and thrilling and that's like, what I was that was that's what I was hoping. Chewing up the scenery. Melodramatic yeah. is what I wanted it to be. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. And people everyone I asked, I asked multiple people, I was like, I should like get high and go see this, right? And, and they're like, like, No. No, no one. Like it's just not even it's not even funny enough. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That that's is so that's what I hope I, I, that's what I sad. wish for, me, just for them to be great. <laughs> Or for them to be fun, and if they're both, that's amazing. But <laughs> if not, at least have an idea of what you're doing. And I think not being brought up enough is no one's like Ridley Scott made this. Well, the other thing is like he made another like the Last Duel is great. I don't know if you saw the Last Duel; it's a lot of fun, and it's probably like the tonally probably what this should have been <laughs> in terms of like huge name actors really going for it and like you can tell that they're having fun and it is like insane. And cool I feel like Ridley Scott's like good. hairline was receding or something. And he spent all of 2021 making beautiful people have bad hair and things yeah. to like cover up for it. He's like, okay, everyone in house of Gucci is going to look ridiculous. I'm going to make the last duel where everyone looks like if I woolly willied goodwill hunting for an hour. I didn't watch the, 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 last duel though i think it's I, stream it's streaming now you should check it out it's it's really good i liked it a lot <sighs> all right that's well that's good for house of gucci i feel what do we do do i say we go to break again yeah let's go to a break all right let's go to the break well <laughs> um look i'm doing it the break thing that we were talking about all right no i love it um can we go to break at different times than when i said it <laughs> No, what okay. would be the point of that? I don't know. We go like right before and I come back and a joke that's funny to me and makes people tweet like, I think the episode's broken, which happens a lot. In this mm. where people are like, your audio's bad. I'm like, no, that was fully intended like that. Um, okay, we got some movie games we're going to play here, Gianmarco, uh, with you and with Rebecca. This first game is called Before Get and ready Afters. To play before and afters how this game works is two movies are smashed together into one movie i will read you the smash together movie 
plot. You have to tell me the Smash Together movie title. So sort of like the Wheel of Fortune before and afters category. Uh, they're like portmentos. Some examples would be like the Wolf of Wally Street, um, okay. F- Saving Private Silverman, Fargo, which would be Argo and Fargo, stuff like that. Poorly right. put together. All right. Do you feel good about it? Do you feel confident? Mm, you know, I don't watch a lot of movies recently. It's tough for me. That's I okay. Don't know These are from any time ever. Been good. I, yeah, I, I think I could. I think I'll, I think I'll be okay. We'll see. Okay. I love um, this. I know we did this one and this one and this one. We did four. I'm trying to find the ones we did the other. Okay, here we go. Um, dang, we did. I used too many of these the other day. <laughs> How many of these did we use in this record? I have this big list of them. Um, we did four. Four. We did four of them. Here we go. Here we go. Um, a misfit Norse teenager befriends and works with an injured creature, and the two get caught up in a wife's disappearance that may have been all been set up, may have all been to set up her husband. I'll read that again. I, I stumbled through that. A misfit Norse teenager befriends and works with an injured creature, and the two get caught up in a wife's disappearance that may have all been to set up her husband. This one. Is okay. Good. Okay. I think it's Gone Girl is one of them. Is and the first one Percy Jackson? What the hell is that? Like a like a <laughs> t- like a YA thing with like a there's like a centaur oh. and like a kid. No, uh, or is it is it Loki? No, wait. And what did I say? Gone Girl. Gone Girl. Um, when Norse, what does Norse mean? Norse like Thor. A misfit Norse teenager. <laughs> Befriends and works with an injured creature, and the two get caught up in a wife's disappearance. An injured creature. Who? What? What's a creature? This is giving me like sci-fi fantasy genre vibes, right? Or no? Yeah, but what's like? Yeah. Injured creature, like like a unicorn, like a that kind of creature, or like creature, like any kind of animal, like normal animal. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. The answer is yeah. Um, um, is it Gone Girl, the second one? Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. Advice. So then what? Uh, Norse. You think Norse is referring to Thor? I mean, I don't know. It might not be. I don't think he's a teenager. Surely he must be older. Is right. Norse? I thought Norse was like Viking. Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah, I guess that's Thor. But uh, yeah, so it's probably it probably is uh, just a Viking thing. What are the name of the four <laughs> movies? Love and God. I haven't, and I haven't s- uh, I'm going to tell you before you get too far into Thor, it has nothing to do not with Thor. Thor. It's not Thor. It's not Thor. I don't want to sit here like on uh, Taika Waititi's IMDb page solving. <laughs> I haven't. This. I haven't seen any of those All movies, right. so I I'm going to give you guys this know. one. We are looking for how to train your dragon girl. Right. Damn. Oh, is he supposed to be Norse? I thought he was Scottish. I just said Norse on Google. Okay. <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I haven't right. seen I haven't seen that either, but I I was under the impression it was a Scottish thing. But all right, here we go. Here we not. go. Number two. Number two. Condemned to live off of the blood of the living for eternity, a 15th century prince heads to Los Angeles to save jazz. Uh, that's La La Land. Mm-hmm. And uh. But what is the second one? I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> um, the va- what diary of a what are the vampire movies? There's, there's Interview with the Vampire. There's Twilight, Breaking Dawn, New Moon. Um, wow, doesn't know the tagline to any Thor movies, but here we are rattling off the Twilight tag. There's um, those are those are fun to watch to get fucked up and watch. Um, What's the third one? There's there's five movies. I don't think it's a Twilight movie. It's not. Okay. No, I think it's another vampire. Okay, so there's Interview with the Vampire. There's Dracula La Land. Dracula La Land. Yeah. Good Bram work. Stoker's Dracula La Land. This is fun. You should make a book of these. I, I've thought about it very frequently. I think the idea, I don't want to get, you got the description, and then you have a Photoshopped image, and then you would have the title as like the third page. I've got a lot. Oh, you got to do it. Um. I have a really good Photoshop of heat, pray, love. All right. Um, I'm not going to pull it up for very long, but there we go. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> God. That's so funny. 
Uh, all right, we'll do one more. Got one it more. Right there, ready to go. It is right there, ready to go. <laughs> it's uh, you know how many things are like uh, my depression away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, all right. Last one. A team of Jewish soldiers are assembled to commit violent acts of retribution against Nazis as they attempt to rescue a princess and restore freedom and justice to the galaxy. Okay. So, okay. Inglorious Bastards. Glorious Bastards. Say that second part one more time. Uh, as they attempt to rescue a princess and restore freedom and justice to the galaxy. Star Wars? No, that's that's the, the, the Marvel one. The James Gunn one. I don't know. Uh, I don't know Marvel stuff. Oh no, it's it's the one with the uh, Chris Pratt. Wait, sorry. The name of the first movie is Glorious Bastards. This is Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, mm. Or Star Wars. Uh, and Glorious... Princess Leia, right? That's the uh, the whole thing. That's true. <laughs> uh, between... What's but what's the name of that one? Because <laughs> I haven't it. seen any of them. Say it. Just say it. You guys have it right there. You just gotta say it. Star. Inglorious Bass Star Awards. Oh, God. Uh, Kyle. Uh, it was fun to watch like Rebecca <laughs> resign to her fate halfway through. <laughs> All right, that's it for before and afters. This next game is going to oh, no be... Uh, uh, the two of you are going to be competing against one another. Build a perfect movie. It is called Build the Perfect Movie. How it works is I will give you a category... You have to pick two movies from that category whose Rotten Tomatoes score adds up to as close to 100 as possible without going over. My God. Price is Right rules apply. Uh, so you'll each pick one. We will then review the scores, and then you can pick your second one accordingly. Um, Rebecca, since you've played, we'll have you go first. The category is we need to build the perfect movie where any of the characters are real people. If that makes sense. So House of Gucci, everyone in this is, you know, based on real people, based on real people, we'll say. Uh, so you got to build big two movies. We'll get a little background. GM here. Okay. Um, so two All movies right. are your first one. And uh, Gene Marco, I'll tell you, oftentimes the strategy people will do is try to pick polar polar opposites. Bad and good, good and, you know, go low, go hot. Then mm-hmm. Going in the middle is tough right. sometimes. Yeah. Oh, man. I feel like this is a movie that I feel like I didn't see it, it but I feel like it, the score should be low, but probably it will be high, and I'll be upset that I picked it. I'm gonna go with Vice. Vice. All right. Uh, and I'll go with. I I mean I wonder if this has a Rotten Tomato score. It's so old, but my left foot. Does. All right, here we go. Vice is a 65% on Rotten Tomatoes. 65%, so you're going to be looking for a 35. My left foot is a 98%. Yeah. So you need a 1 or a 2. <laughs> so think about the worst possible movie you can think of and then hope someone in it is based on a real person. Cameos count, it all counts. Um, Rebecca, you will pick first since you have more to make up. We're looking for a 35. All right. Can we get an established um, winner? God. Um. I just feel like almost all of these are always like prestige movies. So. Um. Well, luckily you don't have to get two. Right. Yeah. Good point. Um. Okay. I'm gonna go with um. Uh. There is a very famous zero oh, percent with a real person as the lead. I forgot. Really? Yeah. Damn. Um. Okay. I I really don't. Um. I really don't know. Um. I'm gonna go with. Oh God. Was Ichabod Crane a real person? <laughs> no, he wasn't. He's a fictional character. Um. Yeah, that's true, I, right? I don't know. No, 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 he wasn't. But, um, what's, uh, I literally am, I cannot think of a single movie. 
I'm just gonna go with Bill and Ted again, like I did in the last one, even though I know that the score is gonna be wrong, because don't they, like, in one of them, go through history and, you like, You wanna meet... go through Bill and Ted's bogus journey? Yeah, what's the one where they meet presidents and stuff? Probably that one. Is I that got Bill that and Ted's one? bogus journey with the Pizza Hut pizza once. All right. The DVD. Well. All right, we'll give you that. All right, Gene and Margo, we're looking for a movie that is zero, one, or two percent, where anyone in it is real or based on real person. Say, run ups two. There's probably a cameo in there, right? There's, yeah, there's several. Oh, cameos <laughs> is what I wasn't thinking of. All right, here we go. Vice is a 65. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey also a 56. So we're a little yeah. bit over right there. Yeah. Grown ups two. We're looking for one or two. My left foot is 98. Grown ups two is eight. Eight oh, percent. So no qualifier. That is so close. <laughs> I will tell you. Uh, a solid 0% is Gotti. Oh, uh, yeah, of the course. Board. And that would be really on brand for this episode. Across the board. <laughs> you could have gone with it. All right, our final game, yeah. and then we're out of here. Our last game is called Guess What Movie Kyle's Dad is Describing Having Only Watched the Trailer okay. and Never Having okay. Heard of the Movie. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, wow. Guess what movie okay. trailer Kyle's okay. Dad is Describing okay. Having Only Watched the Trailer okay. and Never okay. Having Heard of wow. the Movie. How this game works is my dad watches a trailer for a movie. He then describes that trailer, and we have the audio of his description of him describing it. Uh, you listen, you have to guess what movie my dad is describing. For context, has not been to a movie theater since the original Space Jam. Does not have a lot of uh, acting or actor or, or cinema knowledge to bring to it, if that makes sense. So you're working, that, that's sort of the, the level of knowledge we're working with. All right. Um... Here we go. Okay. She's saying he wouldn't be stuck in traffic if he listened to her. It started out like any other night, but plans changed. She left and now he gets in. Looks like they're doing plan B. He's saying they need to improvise while we see crazy fighting and shooting and knife fights. More intense music. He said, I should only kill people after I get to know them. They're still in the car. The one guy is laughing. Tons of quick shots. Guns driving around now. Now a cl nightclub. He's saying to shoot him if he wants to slow down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man wait and is this from recent or any time great question it is from any time <laughs> is it like mr and mrs smith or something he's not mr and mrs smith that that is where my mind was going that kind of vibe i can see that through there i mean it, guns couple nightclub nightclub this one is hard. I thought the Palm Springs one was hard. This the Palm Springs one was. Hard. This is harder than the Palm Springs one. That um, one almost drove me know. to madness. Well, but that okay. one at least made a lot of sense once you figured out what it was. Right, right. This is like and this, a, and this does it. No, not as much now that I, hear it, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This seems like a very short trailer. This is like the little trailer they. Yeah. Put or they play the real trailer. I think I edit in, I edit out some of the gaps because there's times when he's just sort of not saying anything. Otherwise, Dude. it'd be like a two minute and 55 second read. All, all we know is it's a couple in a car, shots of guns, nightclub. And we know he, yeah, we really they, didn't get they a lot kill, of information. They kill people. They do kill people. They kill people. I'll tell they you this. Most of the trailer, it's not the couple. Most of the trailer, <laughs> it is uh, two guys. Oh, Okay, he didn't say that. <laughs> um, it, she, he did guys. say she leaves and now he gets in or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Is it rush hour? Close. Some of it takes place during that. Oh. Not during the oh. movie rush hour. During what the no, no, lowercase no, r, lowercase h. Yeah, yeah. What's the movie where the guy goes, I'm too old for this shit? <laughs> what is that movie? Um, <laughs> I almost said blue streak. Lethal weapon. Lethal weapon. Oh. Lethal weapon. No, it is not. 
This is tough. This is not a movie I think people think about a lot, even though I really like it. Is it like a buddy cop kind of thing? No. No. Okay. Um. All right. You want the answer? Or you can I, keep uh, getting hints if you want to keep getting hints. Yeah, What's up? I like hints. Yeah. Hints? Uh, yeah this has say? a very, this has one of the most famous actors of all time as the antagonist in a non-traditional for him, especially for the time, antagonistic role. All right. Most famous, hmm. Tom Hanks. Uh, who's Who's not the antagonist? I think this guy might be more famous than Tom Hanks. Worldwide. Nicholas Cage. <laughs> World, I'm thinking like he's huge, he's huge I didn't in China. Say best, I said most famous. <laughs> um, for, who's who's more famous worldwide? Like The Rock, Chan, Jackie Chan, The Rock, Vin Diesel, Bruce Willis. Uh, no, it's none of those. <laughs> okay. More famous. more famous than The Rock. Maybe The Rock now is approaching this <laughs> okay. guy's peak of fame, but I'm not sure. Tom Cruise. There we go. Um, it's, is it, he's playing a villain. Is it Tropic? No, no. No. What? Uh, wow, Tova's right there and you're going to say that managers and agents are the villains of, of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Tom Cruise is the bad guy. Tom Cruise is the bad guy. People, I, if I thought people were screaming the Palm Springs answer at this moment, I think that there's going to be people he... listening. I'm trying to remember him playing like, I feel like, yeah, that that would be very uncharacteristic and that should stand out, <laughs> but. All right, folks, we are looking for Collateral. Oh, I haven't seen Collateral. Oh, it's good. <laughs> that's, that's really all I can say. <laughs> good. If you like movies where it's kind of just that movie and it's real fun and good, this is that, right? And he's the villain? He is the villain. He is great. Wow, that's fun. It's mostly him and Jamie Foxx, the entire movie, and they are very fun to watch. Michael Mann made it, so it's all... Uh, right. Close. <laughs> it's all like him with his little camera. All right, that one was collateral. Gianmarco, thank you for being here, and thank you for having never seen House of Gucci. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> let everyone know where to find you, about your podcast, all that sort of stuff, and anything you'd like to let them know. Yeah, uh, listen to my podcast. It's called The Downside, uh, available wherever you get your podcasts. It's YouTube as well. Um, the Downside with Jamarco Cerezi. And find me online. It's uh, at Jamarco Cerezi. It's spelled, I'm sure, in the show notes everywhere. And I got uh, a lot of dates coming. When does this come out? Great question. Maybe about a month. Sure. Just find me online. I got a mailing list, a text list. All that stuff. I'm touring around. I'm going to uh, Michigan, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Indianapolis, Connecticut, a uh, bunch of places this year. So f just find me on social media, particularly Great. Instagram. Thank you. Check out the Downside Podcast. Thank you guys very much for listening. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. I've never seen it.